What's up guys, I know you probably didn't expect this video because I was whining about my finals and how I couldn't really play Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 because of them, which is partly true and it's partly sad as well. But <laughs> then again, I had history in the morning yesterday and today I have economics in the afternoon and there was quite a bit of time between that, so yesterday afternoon I felt like just doing some Roller Coaster Gun 3 stuff because I had a little bit of a flash of inspiration, which has everything to do with the entire Transylvanian theme that's been going on, and it's also kind of justified by RCT3 Tommy's awesome building because he also decided to make something Transylvanian after he saw my building and I, I looked at it and I was like, wow, the fuck, you just knocked me out of the park with that style, and I, I couldn't resist but open the game and see if the Romanian theme would actually be okay for a park entrance because here's the here's the thing that I've been struggling with it's the overall layout of the park and it's definitely something in which I felt Rose Garnens kind of failed because even though I like the park on a small aspect as in I like the areas on their own but the path work and the overall layout of the park doesn't really seem to be too great to me and that's something that I wanted to avoid with this new park, so I kind of wanted to plan it out more. But I felt like I wasn't really ready to start doing stuff like the main street and the entrance building and the train station, for example. But when I, when I saw his building, I was pretty convinced that the Romanian style would actually work out for many more things than just that little palace I built. So decided to open up my game, and this is all completely experimental by the way, so I'm sorry for any of the experiments that go on in this time lapse, and which cause it to take quite a while, it's a pretty long time lapse and there's quite a bit of building stuff and then removing it, but you know it's all part of the process, so it doesn't really matter as long as the um, end result is pretty cool I guess. So I decided to do that and this building is mainly supposed to be some kind of train station-ish thing. It was sort of inspired by the Europa Park train station that you have over the entrance, or at least I think it's a train station, at least it looks like it. Uh, it was inspired by it alright. <laughs> and um, I kind of wanted that, but also a mixture of Disneyland Paris kind of thing, because th that has that really big hotel in front of it, and then you go through a gate, and then on the other side you have the main street. And that's the kind of thing that I also wanted to have over here. So that's why I built this building, and decided that if I wanted to go with any style for the main street, then it should be a somewhat kind of generic style that would work for the entire park in general, because I still do want to go for many different themes. But then again, if I wanted to do the Main Street in a Disney style, then I'd get something we've all seen before. And I am pretty confident, at least, the Romanian slash Transylvanian theme has pretty much shown that it's pretty capable of doing many things. Because it, it has that mixture between the Main Street, but it also has those Alpine influences and the castles, and it, it's just a pretty awesome theme. And I think that it could actually fit for Main Street because it has all the elements that you generally want in it. So it has the classical arches and pillars, things like that. But you also have the Tudor style roofs and um, walls with the woodwork. So I really like the theme in general. So that's why I wanted to try this. And after I built this building, I felt confident en enough about it to make it an entrance. And that's why I decided that this is going to be the first episode of the new Let's Play series. It's not a new Let's Play series, but it's a new park, alright. And that's kind of the backstory behind behind this. So, um, what is this thing all about, you might ask. Um, I really didn't know too well at the time. The only thing that I was really planning is I wanted a tower in the middle with a walkway underneath it. And then I wanted to have some wings on both sides. And just sl slowly, gradually get the building to be lower towards the sides and it's it's overall a pretty standard structure in terms of shape it's really just the details and the use of materials that's quite unique about this building though i do want to say about it that i'm not too sure about the colors yet it does seem like an awful lot of um, that light brown kind of color but so far i'm pretty happy with it and if i really wanted to recolor it that's really not too much work the the only thing that i really wanted to let this building do well is to be to serve as a sort of entrance building. Now mind you, this is not going to be the real entrance building, this is not going to be the building where you pass through the gates and have the tickets and stuff. Kinda wanted to have a square in front of this building, and in front of that square, I want to have some very small buildings for the tickets, where you buy the tickets and where you pass through the gates and stuff like that. And be beyond this building is going to be the gates that leads to the main street. I think that's, uh, that's a pretty solid planning. 
And what I wanted to do with the rest of the park is a very Disney-esque kind of realistic park. I want to divide it into different sections, but each, sec each section is going to be a lot smaller than I originally planned to and like I did in Verona Valley. It's going to be more like Disney, except I wanted to use some themes that are much more obscure and less common than the themes in Disney. So I wanted to have a um, Dutch slash Flemish section and I'm still definitely going to do that. That's one of the themes I really want to use. Um, there is going to be probably a Romanian section with probably some castles, stuff like that. And the, the Baltic section is definitely going to happen. And when it comes to other things, I really don't know. And I'm counting on my fingers right now. I'm like having some sort of presentation when I'm talking into a microphone. What am I even doing? And um, some other themes are just... I, I'm thinking... I'm, I'm, th I'm, I'm thinking about having a Japanese theme and some other Asian stuff as well. Maybe an Arabian theme. Though those things are probably still a bit too mainstream. Something that I've been wanting to try out for a very long time is an Indian theme because I feel like barely anyone is really doing those things but I really like them and it's pretty unique and it also has some really cool elements and takes a lot of elements from other themes and that's... I think that's the most important thing that I want to have for themes in this park because as much as it's fun to use themes that nobody's ever really done before it's also a problem because you don't really have custom scenery sets for it. Now the shape that the building has right now, by the way, is going to be the final shape with just those alpine things in the side. Um, I was kind of not so sure about the base though, because the base did seem a little bit high, so in the end I just copied this entire structure and lowered it 1H because that seemed to work out a lot better than having this very high base. Especially with those pillars, it's perhaps a little bit too high if you, you know, you understand that people need to walk underneath them, but I think those pillars are 4 meters high or something like that. And 6 meters probably. So, that's a bit too much. And that's really the only problem that I have with this building. Some other problem is, um, I think it was Dutch who said it, that this building might actually be too big and imposing for an entrance building. And it fit more like a dark ride kind of building. Which, in hindsight, I kind of have to say that I kind of agree on that. It's pretty damn big and imposing for just, you know, an entrance kind of building. But then again, I already built it as an entrance and I really don't want to go through the entire process of rebuilding this thing to make it a dark ride section, especially considering the fact that after multiple tries, I finally got something that I really wanted to have at the entrance of my park because I tried a couple of other things, actually time-lapsed them as well, but they didn't really work out as well, so threw those things away. I still saved them though, don't worry, they're saved as structures and I might use them either for inspiration or to work into another building, but it's really not something that I really wanted to go for. And I feel like this building is small enough to be realistic enough to be used in a theme park like Disney, but also not too big that it's over the top, because I do want to go for realism. <laughs> as stupid as this sounds, we're looking at this building. One of the main inspirations really was Disney, and I did. What I should have done a very long time ago, and I should have done many more times than I've done so far, is just to go to Paris on Google Maps and go into Disneyland, and you can actually do that on Google Maps. I was quite surprised. You can just take Street View and, like, walk inside the theme park. And, you know, looking at the layouts, I decided a couple of things that I wanted to do, and looking at how the various attractions are spaced from each other, stuff like that, that was just kind of like some background study that I should have done a long time ago because as much as I like individual buildings, I've always been struggling with the way that you make up a theme park. And that's been one of the issues that I really wanted to address in this park and wanted to fix for once and for all. And that is going to happen, hopefully. <laughs> I really can't promise too many things, but hopefully that's going to happen. Also something that I do want to do in this Let's Play is um, I'm going to have summer vacation pretty damn soon. And I'm going to try to no live for Rollercoaster Second 3 as much as I can. And just record as many things as I can. And if I decide that something doesn't really work out too well, I guess I'll just have to throw it away. Because I'd rather actually go the perfectionistic route <laughs> with this park and end up throwing away a lot of work. But in the end, having a beautiful park, then just keep on working with something that I'm not really a big fan of. And then in the end, having spent a lot of effort on something that I'm not a huge fan of. So this park is going to incorporate a lot of planning and a lot of working ahead on certain things. So it might take a long time, but then again, hopefully it's going to pay out. I mean, it's going to pay off in the end. 
And the back side of this building, by the way, is a lot more alpine than the, the front. Which is something that I wasn't really sure about because I wasn't really sure how an alpine main street would work. At least I, I know how an alpine main street kind of works and how a, well, main street, main street. I think it's just generic slash um, American kind of main street. But I've never really seen a mixture like this, for example. So it's going to be a bit of experimentation also on the main street and how that is going to work. But I'm kind of looking forward to it and got loads of ideas that I kind of want to try out. So it's probably going to work out in the end. Hopefully, probably. That's uh, definitely something that I'm hoping for. Now concerning this entire park layout thing, the way I've planned it so far is um, to have that ticket thing in the front and after that have a pretty cool square with like a fountain or something cool like that. Whatever Disney does in their squares, I might do something similar. And then this building and then the main street with just some various shops, maybe a couple of dark rides. I really don't know yet. I guess we'll just see in uh, the near future. And after that, you know, some kind of standard walkway boulevard-ish thing and a cool square in the middle of the park. And then from the middle of the park, it's going to branch out into various directions and various themes, of which I want to try many things, by the way. Uh, <laughs> there's just so many ideas in my head that I kind of wanted to, to give a shot. And the only thing that I'm not sure of is whether I want to do like Disney always does, whether I want to have a castle or something like that in the middle, because one thing with this park is that it has this style that I have for the entrance. It's gonna, it's gonna be the main generic-ish style for the rest of this park. But I'm not really sure if I can really build an, a castle with that in the middle of the park. And whether that would be too much of Disney ripoff. Because I don't want to rip off Disney. It's going to be my mainly my inspiration not for the themes but for the park layout. So that's something to keep in mind. So I might actually build like a skyscraper or something in the middle of the park. A hotel or... I'm, I'm not really sure yet, but we'll see, I guess. Maybe a Romanian castle or just nothing in the middle of the park. Just a square and stuff around that. That's something that I'll just have to see about in the future. Maybe some people can have some awesome suggestions because I definitely am not the only person who can come up with everything. And there will also be custom scenery. And I am not really sure yet if I really want to feature that in the, um, in the Let's Play episodes. Because, you know, that, that might turn into boring SketchUp shenanigans. And it takes quite a while to import and make custom scenery. But I am planning to, if I, if I you know, find pieces that I really want to use but don't have yet in custom scenery, I definitely want to just model those pieces and import them. And in the end, maybe end up with a cool set just for this park that I can release so that people can use some cool stuff. But the one thing that I'm not really sure about yet if, is if I want to feature that in the Let's Play, because if I'm going to do that, then it's going to be quite an important aspect of this park. And it's also going to be quite a bit of time that I put into this park just to make that work. But then again, it's not really the standard Let's Play thing to watch people make custom scenery. And it's, it's not really the most exciting thing. So I'm really debating whether I should feature that in my video somehow, maybe turn it into a mini series aside from this park, or if I want to feature it at all and just keep it to my live streams. And to be very fair, the custom scenery making live streams aren't really too much fun either. But, you know, custom scenery making is something that I'll have to do anyway. And, you know, I've been doing it mostly alone up until this point, but sometimes you just can't find enough motivation to import and or to model and import the custom scenery that you want to have. Though honestly, it's mostly the importing that I always struggle with. Not because it's hard, because but because it's just such a tedious thing to do. And I always <laughs> get ahead of myself when building custom scenery that I start thinking of things that I want to use it for without even having imported it into the game yet. And then I, I start wanting that piece, but then I still have to import it. But my my craving for the piece is not as much as the will to actually import it, and it's just general problems, alright. And that's something that I wanted to avoid, so I'll see if I can feature that somehow. Whether that would actually be a good idea, I might just mess around with that idea. And I guess we'll just see, in the end, what's going to happen with the custom scenery issues. And really, I feel like many more things that I expected beforehand can be done with custom scenery. I expected that just to make this kind of style, this Transylvanian Romanian theme work, I would have to import many pieces because looking at some castles that I found in Romania, they actually have many pieces that you don't have in Rollercoaster 3. 
But then again, you can pretty much build very similar things with custom scenery that we already have. And although it doesn't look the same, it still has the same kind of shape and it gets the same idea across. So really, the more I look at it, the more uncertain I become that I really have to make new custom scenery. But it's something that I want to try out and something that can definitely help the park look better. Especially for things like having the name of the park in fountains and things like that. And if I really wanted to have really unique buildings, then I definitely need to get to that. For the main street though, and for the path work and stuff like that, I'm pretty much good. There are many sets for that, and I've picked up quite a bit of quite a lot of sets lately that I never really worked with before, but turn out to be quite good sets. So, oh, all in all, I I don't really feel too bad about this whole custom scenery deal and getting more custom scenery to make new things with. But it's just something that I wanted to consider because it seemed like like something that could be worth it and something that I've never done before. But yeah, at this point the building is pretty much finished and pretty much looking badass. This is just a picture of it and even though I'm not really sure about the base yet, I feel like it's good enough. And especially on the back side where the base is less prominent, I really like it. And there was one last pick, I, I, I still suck at this editing with clouds and stuff like that. But I looked at this castle and I was like, oh, hmm, hmm, could use some clouds in the background. Maybe that would look cool. And I guess I was right. It does look pretty cool with some clouds in the background. So this is it. This is the building. And this is the first episode of the Let's Play. I mean, the new Let's Play Park. <laughs> and I'll see you all in the next episode. So till then, thanks for watching.